Now we're going to look at a um, uh, question from midterm one in 2011, question 3A. Alice's current job pays $6 per hour. Her utility function is U C function of C and R, which is equal to R C squared, where R is hours of leisure and C is dollars worth of consumption. She has 100 hours to divide between work and leisure. A. How many hours per week will she choose to work? Show graphically and be sure to show all of your work. So we've got two good C and R. We've got prices, one for C, because we're assuming the price of uh, all other consumption is normalized to one, and W, which is wage, uh, and that's the value of our leisure. Our endowments are uh, given by our time constraint, which is R plus L is equal to 100 hours, and that's specified in the problem, which means that the number of hours worked is L is equal to 100 minus R. So how are we going to derive our budget constraint? Well, we're assuming that all our income is spent on C. So we start by saying, okay, how much can we make? And we know all of that is going to equal our consumption. So we know that our consumption, our level of consumption is going to have to equal our wage times the number of hours we work. Well, we know we want to write our budget constraint in terms of R, so we can maximize it with respect to our utility function. And so uh, we substitute in 100 minus R for L times W, and that's equal to our consumption. And we're also given that the wage is equal to 6. So now we can substitute in 6 for W, and we have C is equal to 600 minus 6R. Rearranging, we have 6 times R plus C is equal to 600. And 600 is the maximum amount of income we can make if we do not consume any leisure at all. And this is how uh, our budget constraint looks graphically. And this is the, the answer to the first part of the question, which says show graphically. Uh, they also want us to specify how many hours per week that she'll choose to work. So we have to solve a utility function, find the optimality condition, and calculate the value of L that we have at this point right here. So to find out how many hours per week that uh, Alice will choose to work, we're going to solve this maximization problem right here. Uh, so find the um, we need to find first thing you need to do is always find the optimality condition I used the substitution method to find it so we've got the MRS here according to this this is the MRS value simply taking the derivative with respect to R and then with respect to C and setting it equal to the price ratio and we have it right here implies that C is equal to 12R plugging this into the budget constraint we have 600 is equal to 6R plus 12R which is 18R and these are our um, uh, optimal values of uh, C and R and that's fairly approximated well approximated on the graph but notice the question asks how many hours per week she will choose to work and we know that the um, uh, equation for working is L equal to 100 minus R so we know that the optimal number of working hours is 100 minus 33.3 which is 33.33 hours can just add a three there. So yeah, the optimal value for R is actually 33.33, but it doesn't matter either way you can write it. But the answer given to L star or the optimal number of working hours is 66.67 hours. So this is um, again from the same midterm, midterm one of 2011. The second part of the question, question 3b, uh, suppose that the government introduces a program to help lower income individuals. It provides a cash transfer of $250, but reduces the transfer by $1 for each additional dollar the individual earns. This statement right here is that means that the marginal rate of taxation is equal to 100%, because for every additional dollar you make, the government takes uh, $1 away from that transfer. So please illustrate Alice's budget constraint under the new program. So we know the cash transfer is equal to $150. Um, and it decreases by $1 for every additional dollar that you make. So we know to earn, the first thing we need to think about is how much do we need to work to earn $250. Because if we earn more than $250, then the government won't provide us this transfer. 
So we need to work 41.66 hours. That means that R needs to equal 58.33 hours. So looking at R for 58.33 hours and more, uh, we know that Alice will definitely receive $250 no matter how many hours. She'll receive it indefinitely. If R is less than 58.33 hours, that means her the transfer will not be given. And as a consequence, for every additional hour that she works, one she'll lose $1 from the transfer. So that means that if she doesn't work at all, she can still get $100. And if she works for, let's say, over here, let's say, if she takes 90 hours, uh, 98 hours of leisure, she can still get the same amount of money. So if uh, she gets 250 at this point, then she won't have incentive to give up leisure at this point. So she'll just remain at this point. That means that we have a corner sol solution at A because Alice's utility is maximized here. If you want to find the point of tangency between her Alice's utility, which is some utility function I drew at I0, uh, you can just shift I0 backwards and you can see that it's not even optimal. It goes through her budget constraint. So the best thing for Alice to do is consume um, at R equals 100 and get the transfer, the cash transfer of $250. And this is exactly how her budget constraint would look like. She gets 250 indefinitely and then she gets a uh, downward sloped uh, budget constraint because the government reduces the transfer by $1 for every additional dollar she makes. So if her leisure is less than 58.33 hours, her income is the budget constraint we derived in the last question. And if her leisure is greater than 58.33 hours, her income is exactly $250. Uh, so this concludes um, our coverage of topic four for labor supply. As you can see, it really overlapped with income and substitution effects and the utility maximization topics. So it was much easier to get through uh, labor supply. Now I'll move on to government grants and taxes, which is the final topic for this tutoring session. And it is a composition of all the past four topics into one.